All right, guys, what's up? I know it's been a while since we've done a bio lane video log, so it's been too long. It's time to get after it. Um, first, some housekeeping stuff. Things are going on with me. Um, I will. I haven't been traveling the last few weeks. It's been very nice. Um, but my next appearance, I'm going to be at the Arnold Classic in Columbus, Ohio. That'll be the first weekend of March. You can see me there. Uh, I'm also doing a tour of Australia. We're going to be hitting Melbourne at the Arnold Classic Australia, and then we'll have camps, uh, a camp and a seminar uh, the following week. And then we're going to Perth. We'll have a camp and seminar there, and then we're going to Sydney. We're having two camps and a seminar there, but the two camps in Sydney are completely sold out. The camp in Melbourne is almost sold out. Uh, in Perth, we still have some spots, and all the seminars still have some spots. So if you want to go to that, uh, book your tickets now. Um, I don't think they'll last much longer. And uh, if you want to see me, I would highly recommend going to this because I will not be going back to Australia next year. I'll be doing a Europe tour next year, most likely. So I would highly suggest uh, going to this unless you want to wait two years uh, or more to see me. Um, what the subject I want to talk about today? Oh, and then you can also see me. You can also see me at uh, in Virginia uh, the. Third weekend of April, I believe, April like 22nd to 24th, um, at Mass Weekend. I'm doing uh, seminars, camps, and uh, there. Um, you can go to massweekend.com for more information about that. Or for more information about anything that's related to me, you can go to my website, biolane.com. So, today's topic is fat burning foods. Uh, and it's probably not going to be the clickbait that you thought it was going to be. Um, I want to talk about this. So we hear this a lot in the media and uh, different articles we read and whatnot, and we see X food burns fat. It's a fat burning food. Eat this or never eat these foods or, or eat this food because it burns fat. What are they actually talking about? Well, typically the if it's found in any research, a lot of times it isn't. If you got it off Mercola's site or Food Babe, it wasn't founded in any science. I can promise you that. But if it was found in science, um, sometimes uh, there can be some, some accuracy to the idea of a fat burning food. So typically they're talking about thermogenesis, so output of calories, okay? And in particular, the thermic effect of food, or TEF. So when you eat food, that food has a certain amount of calories, a certain amount of energy uh, value associated with that food. And in order for you to get the calories out of that food, your body actually, actually has to put in calories. So you have to put in a little work to get out more, okay? And the idea being your body's going to do a little bit of work to get a lot more calories, okay? That's how you survive and subsist. And when we talk about foods, um, first off, thermic effect of food is a pretty small representation of your daily energy expenditure. So if you look at it as a percentage of your total energy expenditure, it's about 10%, okay, or less. Now that's not to say it's not significant. So it's important to keep in mind that while it is a significant effect, it's not even close to the majority of the calories you expend per day, okay? So when we're talking about different foods, uh, they can have differential impacts on TEF. Uh, for example, fats are 5 to 15 percent of the calories consumed at most, all right? So um, if you eat fat, um, let's say you eat 100 grams, or I'm sorry, 100 calories from fat, anywhere from your body, it would cost your body anywhere from 5 to 15 to digest, absorb, assimilate those nutrients, those 100 calories, okay? Um, for carbs, it's about the same, possibly a little bit more, um, but it's around that 5 to 15% range. Protein is the one that's really a little bit more powerful in terms of thermic effect of food. It's about 20 to 35% um, of, ingest, uh, of, um, of the calories you ingest. So, and that's due to a few, a few different reasons. Um, a lot of people think it's because of digestion of protein. Uh, based on our research, that actually wasn't the case. Um, and not the urea cycle either, but that it was from uh, the, the basically 
the stimulation of muscle protein synthesis because muscle protein synthesis is energetically expensive. It requires ATP. So at least based on our data, that was kind of a, a large portion of uh, what accounted for that thermic effect of protein. So what are we talking about? So we're talking about if you eat 100 calories from, say, all protein, and you burned you know, 30 calories from that, you got 70 net, right, net. Whereas let's say you ate a carb or fat source and you only burned 10 calories out of 100. So you had a 90 calorie net. So that's a difference of 20 calories, okay? Again, not insignificant, but we have to keep in mind what it actually means, okay? It's only a 20 calorie difference. Um, and when we talk about fat burning, so, so backing up, the, the, the point is you, you will see these media articles, like people will see dark chocolate burns fat and they will say, oh, I'm gonna go eat a whole bunch of dark chocolate. Well, <laughs> dark chocolate, yes, it's thermogenic on a calorie per calorie basis compared to maybe some other foods. However, um, it's very calorie dense, okay? So if it's, if it's very easy to overconsume, maybe, let's say it was the best case scenario, which I don't think this is, I haven't looked into specifically the dark chocolate, but let's say it's, you get 30% TEF from that. You know how small of a serving 100 calories of dark chocolate is? It's ridiculously small. So uh, keep in mind that if you overeat on it, it's no longer a fat burning food, okay? And that brings me to my next point, which it's only fat burning insofar as what you replace it with, okay? So if you are, if you read an article, let's take dark chocolate again, because that was hot, maybe a, a year or two ago, and it says dark chocolate's fat burning, and you say, oh, I'm gonna go eat some dark chocolate, and all you do is take your normal diet and add dark chocolate on top of that, you're adding calories to your diet. You're not gonna burn fat, you're gonna store fat, uh, assuming you're at maintenance, okay? So you're adding calories. Now, if you take that dark chocolate and you replace something else in your diet that has a lower thermic effect of food, then yes, maybe you get a little bit more calorie output, okay? But that food in and of itself is not fat burning, okay? That's not how that works. Uh, there's no quote unquote free foods, okay? There is no food that I'm aware of based on any scientific literature where I hear this, I hear this people say, oh, fat burning, you, you can eat as much as you want because you actually have to burn more energy to get energy out of it. Our species would not have lasted very long if that was the case, okay? That's extraordinarily energy inefficient. We would die, okay? If you were constantly eating foods that were negative calories, you would die. Okay, so maybe, I don't know, maybe tree bark is negative calories, I'm not sure. But nothing, nothing that's palatable is negative calories, all right? Now again, some may have a greater calorie output, but that, there, nothing is free, okay? So when we're talking about protein, all right, that has a greater thermic effect of food, okay? Well, like we said, 20 to 35%. Uh, something else that has a higher uh, thermic effect of food is uh, fiber. Fiber is around the same as protein. It's about 30%. Okay, so people will take that and say, oh, I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat all, all, my, all my food from, from protein and fiber. Well, okay, maybe you'll, you'll burn some more food. But I see a lot of people who actually overeat protein and fiber um, in an effort to kind of take advantage of this. And again, if you're on the whole over consuming those foods, if you even over consume calories by let's say 20%, so if, you're, if your maintenance is 2,000, you're consuming 2,400 calories from just protein and fiber, there's a possibility you're gonna start going over your maintenance because those foods are only 20 to 35% uh, TEF, okay? So, that's important to keep in mind. The other thing that's important to keep in mind is that with regards to fiber, uh, a lot of people say, well, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't absorb those carbs from fiber because fiber is technically a carbohydrate. 
You don't absorb those carbs, so it's a free food. I see people all the time say, you don't have to count your vegetables, you don't have to count this, or, or, or the, my favorite is in um, products that have net carbs um, because they subtract the fiber content. Completely false. Again, now that fiber may have uh, may have a higher TEF, okay, and you may not absorb quite as much. But the thing about it is, the the even though you don't absorb fiber in like say uh, the duodenum, typically, um, though those fi that fiber is fermented by the microbiota in the large intestine, and then you reabsorb a lot of that those calories as short chain fatty acids. So I think the number is you still get around like 60 to 70% of the calories, even from, from like vegetables and, and high fibrous foods. So the idea that they are free foods is complete nonsense. Now again, if you're talking about replacing it with something else, like let's say I want to replace 500 calories from rice with 500 calories from broccoli, Yes, there is a higher thermic effect of food associated with that. However, that's going to be a pretty bland diet. So the point is that it's your overall calorie level that is ultimately going to determine your fat burning. Okay? Now, yes, food choices can make a little bit of difference. But we have to keep that in context and perspective of your overall calorie intake um, and, and your goals as well. Now, if you're somebody who you are really down to low calories, um, you're really trying to get that last little bit of fat off, does it make sense to maybe replace some of your more starchy food sources with more fiber because it's more thermogenic and more filling? Sure. Um, but that also doesn't mean that you, if you really want to have some rice or you really want to have a, a starch or something like that, that you can't have it. That, that's completely erroneous. Again, at best, and most we're talking about around 10% of your daily caloric output, okay? Now maybe if you're really getting crazy and replacing all your, say, fat and fiber, you're not consuming any fat, I'm sorry, fat and carbs, and you just replace all the fiber, maybe we're talking about a bigger difference. But for the most part, your resting energy expenditure and your, your, uh, your exercise, all those things have bigger effects and the thermic effect of food. I'm not trying to downplay the fact that certain foods have certain benefits, that that is true, okay? But the effect is pretty small relative to what the media would have you believe. And again, it's only thermogenic insofar as what you use that food, what you replace with that food, okay? So keep that in mind. The next time something comes out that says X food is uh, fat burning, it's only fat burning insofar as what you uh, replace with it, okay? I hope that has clarified some of this stuff, and I hope you find that useful, guys. Um, as always, if you want to get in touch with me about coaching, uh, seminars, anything like that, um, you can go to biolane.com. Um, if you're looking for flexible dieting help but can't really afford a coach, uh, check out our new website, avatarnutrition.com which is uh, uh, a subscription service that uh, uses a uh, computer AI to generate customized macronutrients for you. Uh, also, check out my new line, Carbon, uh, at bodybuilding.com, and uh, some other great stuff we have in our shop at my website, biolane.com. Thanks, guys. I hope to get back to doing these videos more often, and I'll see you then.